Okay. Here's what I'm talking about as far as the the uh, spacers go. Um, on the rear portion of the uh, where the headliner goes, you can see this inner skin here. There's the roof. Here's the inner skin. I put these spacers in. What these what these are are. Uh, they're from the anti-fatigue floor mats. You know, they're, they're actually the, the trim pieces that uh, that go on the edge. Anyways, they fit perfectly in there to maintain to maintain that gap. Um, the first time I put my headliner in, I was trying to do it by myself which is a pain and I was shooting a screw up shooting a screw up in here and the skin here compressed up to the roof and my screw popped out so them spacers are real important I even thought about filling this void in here with great stuff um, I just want to make sure that I have every wire ran that I think I'm ever going to need. Um, I think it would help with uh, sound insulation or soundproofing and, and just rigidity. Um, the front here, the Highliner Headliner comes with comes with this foam you know you can put up for soundproofing. This side came down. Um, it's right there. I gotta put it back up. But then your wires, you got to make sure you run everything you want. Um, I have wires ran this side. I got my uh, um, antenna wire for the radio. I have my CB antenna wire. I have dual dual antennas for the CBs. So I'm I'm running up this post here. You know, you, you go down here, down through here, and then it comes out right underneath the dash in here. There's an opening on both sides. Um, so, like I say, you want to make sure you do that. Also, the other thing that I would advise is if you put a stereo up there on your wiring harness for the stereo, I would get rid of the, the fuses here. Because these are going to be tucked up inside the headliner. And I would move them to a position underneath your dash. So that if you ever do blow a fuse, you have access, uh, you know, you have access without ripping your whole stinking um, headliner out again. Um, and then I have my power, my CB power. Um, what I did when I, when I first did this... Uh, I got a little lazy and frustrated. Just wanted to get it done. I took the uh, the power from the radio, you know, the one that goes to the battery, and I spliced that in with the, with the power for the CB, the always hot. Um, and what ended up happening was, if I would turn the volume up too loud on the on the stereo, it would blow the fuse for the CB. The fuse for the CB is down under my dash over there so it wasn't that big of a problem the only thing was is i really couldn't you know turn the turn the stereo up too loud um then the speaker wires to go to the speakers um you know you got to run them then run them out back and they're right here they're hanging down right now um because there's two speakers for the driver two for the passenger and I have that hooked up so that the four speakers in the back are running off the rear, the uh, rear uh, speakers on the on the stereo, uh, because I do have some some uh, six inch in my door. So them are the front, or wait, maybe them are the rear, and the ones 
up top or the front. Yeah, I think that's the way it goes because the rears always have a little more a uh, little more response in the front. Um, the other thing too, once you get the headliner in, I put a screw in the middle of it because on the original headliner there's a screw in the middle. The highliner headliner doesn't come, you know, it shows not putting screws in there. But the problem is, you get up here, you get your radio in there, and it kind of sags. So I stick a screw up in the middle, holds that up tight, so it holds the, when the radio's in and the CB's in, everything's tight. Um, you can see here where I have my Sharpie line. This is where the headliner comes uh, comes out to. I got to trim it back in so it so it falls, you know, in closer here because I want to try to get my trim to be able to work. Um, so I mean, to do a real good job, you got to take your time. You got to get it set in there. So you can see the other sharpie lines are not quite lining up. Uh, you know, and you got to trim. Um, <coughs> they. They are a pretty nice unit, but like I say, they're they're a little overpriced when you get them from LMC because you got to pay that twenty dollar handling fee. Plus, I I think you'd save like fifty or sixty dollars from going from the manufacturer. Um, and then I took out the uh, here's the speakers that come with with the Highliner headliner. See the speaker, the grills are really kind of shitty looking. Um, I got two two more four inch that I got from Wally World. I didn't put them in yet, but I put these in on the driver's side. See, it's a much much better looking speaker grill. These are three way speakers, twenty four dollars for a set. So you know it's not bad. Fifty bucks for four new speakers for the top. Um, but like I said, just make sure. You run enough wires, you know, that you think you'll need, and uh, I would run an extra power and ground just for the heck of it so that you have it available. You know, they'll all be bundled up right up here, you know, behind where the stereo goes in, so... Um, Oh, I also did read some people were complaining about the, the you know, the stereos because they, they're enclosed in the plastic and the heat from the stereo was melting the headliner. Um, I suppose if you were really, if you really had a powerful stereo, you know, that would be the case. But, I mean, I don't play my music so that it's, uh, you know, shatters your eardrums. I'm, I'm uh, too old for that now. But, uh, anyways, I guess that's it. Like I say, the most important thing, make sure that you get spacers in there. Check your screw lengths, because you don't want something popping through someplace where, where you don't need it. You don't have that much to worry about on the front or the sides. It's the back here that's, uh, that's important. So, all right. That's it. All right, I figured I'd give you a shot of the of the headliner. This is the back side of it. Um, see, it's made by Dash Top, Dash Top Manufacturing. Um, here's the the business end. There's that. Here's where you mount your stereo. Um, as you can see, I. Drill the hole in the back here. That out of there, I run my um, wire for the CB antenna. You know, it's a dual, comes to a single. Bring that out, and I also bring the CB's power out of here. Um, oh, there's the front. There's a. Then I cut another hole there, right there, and that's where I run. Um, uh, the wires for the for the uh, for the stereo radio through that got another hole in there that I run some other wires through can't remember what right now but 
I want to make sure you got enough holes there. Um, you can see the headliner. You can see how the speaker comes right to the back, so that's why your trim won't go on. Um, I'm going to try. I have some some paint trim, paint grade trim that I'm going to try cutting and fitting around there. See if I no, I'll just powder coat it to that almost chrome. Um, but it's not a bad unit. It's not bad. Like I say, it's a piece of freaking probably recycled plastic, black. Um, three hundred bucks. So, all right, that's it. Okay, I almost forgot. This is the piece here that you mount your your stereo through. This goes up into the headliner where I showed you. So you got so you got to cut out the front. It doesn't come cut out. So you got to cut it out, and it doesn't leave you a lot of room. Your regular seven by seven by two head unit is about all it'll take. I think it might be able to go seven and a quarter, but it'd be pushing it. Then for the CB, see I mounted that underneath here. I took some a uh, couple screws pan has countersunk them um, so that they're as close to flush as possible with the bottom because your head unit lays right down flat in here the head unit lays down flat right here you know when it comes through so you don't want these screws sticking up you know otherwise you're gonna you're gonna have problems with the with the radio mounting, but you do that, you know, get your CB mount if you're gonna use a CB, you know. And I you gotta cut the cut the shaft down, you know, right flush with your nuts when you get it on there, um, and it holds really well, very stable, very stable. This goes up in. You got two screws that go up through there there they go into uh into the headliner it has some uh whatever you call them they're th the threaded metal inserts up up in the headliner so and that's why i put that screw in the middle in the middle of the headliner because when you get your head unit in here and the cb on there um it's a lot of weight pulling down but you put that screw back up in the center where I showed you, and it keeps this thing nice and stable going down the road, no problems at all. Um, like I say, some people have said that the head units melt this here, you know, because it's right it's laying right on it. I don't even have any signs of melting. Um, you know, and I would listen to it, you know, it would go up, you know, fairly loud, you know, before it would blow the CB fuse. You know, plenty loud enough for me, so, and no problems. All right, now that's it. Okay, bye.